Well, welcome. I am so pleased that people want to learn more about the library, especially during these times, uh, because we have so much to offer. And uh, it is, of course, a subject that is close to my heart. And as you mentioned, I am uh, Suzanne Carlson Prandini. I am a public services librarian in the adult department at the Bellingham Public Library. And uh, you can kind of see behind me our building. And as you also can see, I'm a little behind in my seasons. I need to find a fall autumnal themed photo for my backdrop here. Um, but we won't be spending much time in this view. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and start our presentation here. And, but before I do that, let's get back to the first spot. Okay. So, all right. So today's talk is Books, Bites, and Belonging. And the first thing that uh, any of us at the Bellingham Public Library would say is all of our staff love working with people and we really want people to understand that we're here to help and that help can take a numerous forms that we we provide assistance on so many different things um, i want to clarify of course that this photo was taken prior to covid this was december 2019 it was one of the last times we were all together in a in a capacity in this way. Um, so it's very important to know that your safety and our safety are utmost. So currently we are open to the public um, during limited hours, but we will be masked and anyone who comes into our space is asked to be masked in accordance with the, the mandates. Um, for those of you who may not be comfortable or, or it might not be safe to be in a, a public space right now, we do offer limited curbside service and um, we will probably continue to offer that for some time yet. So while we look the same on the outside at our building, just know that while we were closed, we had a remodel that had been scheduled prior to the shutdown. And so we are looking different on the inside. So just remember, we're here to help. So if you come into our building and you feel a little lost because it looks very different than how it used to be on that main level, just ask a staff member. We're ha happy to help you locate what you're looking for. So uh, we all are familiar with the idea of libraries being a place where you can get books. You know, it's that print on paper relay of information. We offer a number of ways to connect and get answers. And so some of you might be familiar with our book club kits. That is a tote that has 10 copies of a title and a reading guide and book groups can check those out. So you're not pressed to find copies and you can use that to help facilitate your, your book group discussion. We also offer DVDs. We offer um, books on CD. We offer any number of items that go beyond the traditional print on paper. And some people might say, well, why, why should I get information that way? And well, we don't all learn the same way. And there are so many ways that people learn and have experiences now. So one of those experiences that we're really excited about that we started this year is we offer a Check Out Washington Discover Pass backpack. And in that backpack, you get uh, flora and fauna guides, you get a set of binoculars and a map to all the state parks, and you get a Discover Pass. That Discover Pass gets you, covers your parking fees basically to any of the state parks. And again, this is an experience that you can check out from your library, and it connects you to your local area um, 
and as well as in the state. So libraries, yes, we have books. We love books. That is part of our brand. And we have a lot more to offer. So a lot of people wonder, well, how do I find what I want in your library? And for some of you, this is old hat. You'll be very familiar with this. But for some folks, you might not have been in the library. You might not ever have been in the library. I know I grew up not having access to public libraries. So I think part of my enthusiasm now, when I walk into work, I still feel like I come into a treasure trove. Um, and how you find things is equally as important as knowing that it's there, because if you can't find it, right? So just know that our search tool is an online catalog. It replaces that, that card catalog that um, you may or may not recall. And it is available through our website, as well as through computer stations that are in our building. And if you ever have questions, if you're not finding what you expect, please, please, please check in with a staff member. And you can do that virtually, either online or through chat, or you can give us a call. But we're always willing to help you when you get stuck. So part of what I wanted to do today is walk you through our website and point out some useful navigation tools. So this is a screenshot of our website and the URL is listed at the top. That's bellinghampubliclibrary.org. And we've embedded the catalog search in that upper right hand corner. So I'm just going to talk through the defaults here. Um, up here, uh, you can see that catalog is the default. You can also conduct a site search. So say you're not looking for a thing to borrow. Maybe you're looking for what our policies are on something. You can come over here and select site. And in this keyword search, in this box right here, you can type in policy. And it will bring you up all the web pages that have the word policy on it. So this is a tool that functions for search for in two places, in our card catalog, our online catalog, or our, our site search. Now, the other default is that it's doing a keyword search. That is the broadest search you can conduct. Uh, keyword looks in all the fields. Everything we have in the library that you can check out has a record attached to it. And in that record are different boxes that have different aspects of the nature of that item keyed in. So whether that's a description of its physical or whether it's a description of the content, if you plug in a keyword search on say literary fiction, it will look through all the records and bring up all the records that have the phrase literary fiction in it. So you can also conduct a title search. You can change this to title or author or subject. Um, and then put in your search terms here and then click on that magnifying glass to initiate the search. One thing to be aware of when you do a search, it will then bump you into the catalog, which is a different thing from the website. And you don't really need to know that unless you're wondering why does this look different? It's because you're, it's taking you to the catalog as a tool. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. But for now, just know that that's where the search is, is it this uh, keyword search here. And you can type in anything, author name, title, it'll get you to results. Another thing that I wanted to point out for navigation is along this top part here um, in the red box are our subject headers, our, our guides for how you locate um, more information. So my account would be where you could log in to see what you have checked out, what your due dates are, if you have any holds that are coming in, or if you want to place holds, you would log in under my account. Books and More uh, contains things like reader's advisory guides. So if you're not sure what your next read is going to be, you can look under there for some staff suggestions. Using the library is all about 
locations and hours? How do I get a library card? What are your policies? And digital library is our digital content. How do you connect? How do you start downloading items? Kids and teens are, provide specific focus for those age groups. So if you have someone in your family or a friend that um, you would like to help find resources that's either a kid or a teen, this is a good place to go. And then news and events is where you'll find our calendar and some, some other information. One thing to be aware with our website is that it is adaptive. That means that it changes or alters depending on the screen size of the device that you're using to view the website. So I'm gonna pop back in here. This is the view that you will see if you are on a computer screen, a lap, like a desktop computer, a larger screen size. If you are on a smaller screen size, it's going to look like this. And that menu and that search feature is now going to look like this. And um, often when I help people in tech coaching, which is one of our services that we provide specifically to help people get up and running with our digital services, people don't realize that this three bars here is called a hamburger, but more importantly, that it's a universal symbol that indicates that there's information available to you under that and that you have to tap it on a touch screen or click it um, if you're on a, a small screen for some reason on your on your computer. Um, and I'm just going to show you what that if you tap that um, hamburger, what that menu looks like, because it does look different than how I was showing you before. So if you tap that menu and search screen, this is how that same information lays out. And so you've got that search that I talked about, that keyword search available up here, and it functions the same way, just looks a little different. And then those headers that I just walked through are laid out here. Which leads us to bytes. Um, you know, the card catalog is that bridge from traditional library um, to digital library, where we move from the card catalog onto an, into an online catalog, and that is the standard tool to help find things. And that is a digital tool. So you may or may not have realized that you were already using digital tools if you're using the online catalog. Again, Bytes is such a broad topic, though. It's um, the, the piece that I think people are most interested in, though, is, of course, our digital library. So you may already be using our ebooks and audiobooks that you can download through a website. You might already be streaming movies through our service. But maybe this is something new to you. If it is new, then what you will want to do is take a look at what's available. And under digital library, you would click on eBooks and eAudio. And here are some terms that I'm going to cover to help your experience be a little clearer. Um, for our digital eBooks and audiobooks, and now our e-magazines, um, you we get our content through a company called Overdrive. And that is a third party service provider that we create a contract with. And within Overdrive, we are part of a library consortium called Washington Anytime Library. So if you go to the website, Washington Anytime Library, you are seeing content that's available to over 45 libraries. And we pooled our resources together um, in order to afford the platform fees. So within Washington Anytime Library, which is, is the digital um, content that's available to you, you will use most likely either Libby, which is the most current app, or Overdrive, which is the original app. And it can get a little confusing because Overdrive is both the name of the company as well as the name of the original app. But um, this kind of helps lay out the terms that you'll be hearing as people talk to you about our digital content and getting you up and running. Some of you might be saying, uh, why do I need an app 
to use library content. The apps are basically the keys that unlock access um, because OverDrive doesn't want just anybody being able to uh, use their content. They, they need to make sure that there's a way, uh, a gatekeeping method so that they can get money for the resources that are used, right? That's their, that's how they make their, their living. So the app um, is the tool that allows you to access the content. Now, this is where it becomes really important to understand the difference between the Whatcom County Library System Public Library and the Bellingham Public Library. I am a member of the staff on the Bellingham Public Library, and we are a department of the city of Bellingham. We are funded separately and independently from the Whatcom County Library System. We are highly collaborative, and we have great respect for each other, but when it comes to digital content, because of the contracts that we've written um, and agreed to, OverDrive needs to know that uh, the library card connects to the right system. That's part of our contract um, because, again, they are regionally based. So they only want users within a certain region to use the right library card. So with physical things, it doesn't matter, you know, you've probably seen Whatcom County Library System or Bellingham Public Library on, on a variety of your items. The physical items flow back and forth, no problem. But when it comes to digital use, it's very important that you know which system you belong to. So if your card number starts with 232, you want to select the Whatcom County Library System whenever you log in. Um, if you are a Bellingham Public Library user, your card starts with 236. If you select the wrong library when you authenticate or log in, um, it will give you an error message. And it will say something along the lines of user not recognized. Um, it varies depending on which service you're logging in, what the error message is. But again, remember, if you get stuck at any point, reach out to us and we can help walk you through the process. So when you click on the ebook, e-audiobooks uh, link on our website, it will bring you into this page here. Washington Anytime Library, it'll talk to you a little bit about what that is, and then it will walk you through determining which app best works with the hardware that you have. The hardware being your computer, your tablet, your smartphone, and it will also walk you through which software version you need to have in order to have the apps work successfully. So once you determine which app best works with the device and software that you have, you can click on find a user guide right here at the bottom. And that will link you to step-by-step -step, um, directions as to how to get up and running and then use the service. So that was eBooks and eAudio. Um, just know that eMagazines used to be a separate service and then that company was bought out by OverDrive. So now OverDrive provides both the eBooks and eAudio as well as the eMagazine content. Um, so the next thing to talk about would be e-films and e-documentaries. So our service that we subscribe to is called Canopy. And again, it will take you through a login process and we have step-by-step -step instructions available through this web page um, where you can read through and then get linked to streaming movies online at home. And I have to admit, it still feels pretty Star trek -y to me to be able to be at home at 11 o'clock at night and be like, oh, geez, I just finished my book or my movie or my whatever it is, and I need something new, and be able to download it in the moment and, and be off and running with something new and exciting. So I've been talking a lot about library cards and how you need to know which library system you belong to in order to log into these digital services. So what happens if you don't have a library card? It's not a problem. You can apply online. Um, 
And you do that under using the library and then click on library cards. And there's a link on that page where you can submit um, a request. And with the digital resources, as soon as you get a barcode, you can start using the digital library right away. You don't have to come into the building once you get that library code. Um, just know that it's a combination of the barcode with no spaces or dashes and then your PIN, which is usually the last four digits of your phone number, unless you specify that you want something different. And again, as always, if you get stuck, just give us a call, uh, send us an email, we'll, we'll help you get up and running if you get stuck. So now I'm going to migrate into that philosophical sense of belonging. Why would the library care about belonging? Um, you know, uh, for us, the public library is very much about learning and information and community and connection. So belonging and building that affinity for a place or a situation is part of our mission. And we meet that in a broad sense, as well as in a specific sense. Of course, we want people to come in and connect with the Bellingham Public Library and staff members, um, but we also want to be a, a part of the process of building community in our area. So part of what we do is we provide experiences where people can gather and what that has looked like in the summer has been outside experiences. And uh, so this, these pictures show a number of children's events that we had around summer reading where kids were able to get together in parks, they were masked, they were socially distanced, and they were able to check out books that supported them in their summer reading goals. And for those of you who have been with the library for a while, you know that it's not uncommon for us prior to COVID to have speaker events. Most of those have gone online at this point and they've they've scaled down a bit. But you know, Wacom Reads is a large community-wide program that the Bellingham Public Library is a part of, and you can certainly access those events still. So that brings us to where do we go to find out where these events are happening, whether they're outdoor safe events or whether they're those virtual events. And that's under news and events under calendar. So when you click on calendar, um, what you'll see, and I, I recognize that the, the first month depiction is blurry, um, and I'll show you a blow up of a single day in just a moment, but um, just know that you navigate through the months by clicking on the arrows to the left and right. And then if you wanna skip ahead by an entire year, so if you wanna see what was happening in September, 2022, I can tell you there's not that much there right now, but um, you would click down on the, the month equivalent and that would pump, bump you a year ahead. So if you wanna scroll month by month, that's the arrows. Now, if you click on a single day, this is what you will see. You'll see the events that are listed and you might notice that on September 30th, which is what I've blown up here, those aren't events, those are things. Uh, free pass to Sparks Museum and free passes to the Wacom uh, Museum. And you're probably thinking, why would those be in a calendar as an event? Eh, we're kind of using the software in a little different way than perhaps the software developers intended, but it works really well for for these purposes, which is along the lines of belonging and connection, we don't offer just books and things. We also offer those experiences. I was talking about experiences with the backpack of Checkout Washington. These are another options uh, for experiences in your community. So if you were interested in getting a free pass to the Sparks Museum, you would click on that link. And if it's available, it will say registration open. And you would go ahead and, and submit your information and uh, you'd be able to get a free pass to go to the Sparks Museum on the 30th. And the details would be in that invite. If it's not available, this is what it would look like. It'll say event is full. 
We have limited supplies on any of these days. And so if someone has already claimed those passes for that day, event is full is, is the language used within the software to indicate that those are no longer available. So unfortunately, you have to click through on individual days until you can find a day that the pass is available. There's not a way to, to search um, what is available, but it's worth it if you persist uh, to get access to these passes that are available to you so you can explore more events out in the community and places in the community. So that is our events calendar and how that works. Uh, for our online registrations, usually what happens is, um, for example, I have a book club that I do on a monthly basis. We've been meeting online for, I guess, about, it'll be a year in February. Um, but what happens is people will email me and then I send them the Zoom link to the event. And we meet the fourth Tuesday of every month at 6.30. Um, so at any time, should you find that you get yourself lost on either the website or in the catalog online, just know that you can click on our icon. That's that orange I think of it as a risk player piece, or sometimes it looks like a book that's opened, or maybe it's a revolving door. This icon, if you see it, if you click on it, it will bring you back to the home page of our website. So it's kind of like the homing button on your phone or your tablet, you know, the circle where you tap and it brings you back. Um, our icon kind of functions the same way. If you click on it, it'll bring you right back to that home page. Another way uh, to connect with us, at the bottom of our website on every page, we have our contact information right here. Ask Us is an online form that you can submit. Um, contacts will bring you to our phone numbers. So um, we also offer, we're part of a service called um, Ask Wa, which is a live chat reference. But just know if you go to the chat service, you don't necessarily connect with a Bellingham Public Library librarian. You're going to be connecting with a librarian across the US, or some of them are in the UK. It's a, it's a broad consortium. But they can help you find information on our website if you're not finding it. So there's chat, there's email, there's phone. There's a number of ways you can connect with us. So at this point, um, I think I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of our live website. So let's see if this works. I'm going to click this link here. And it should open up to a web page. OK, so this is that web. I'm oh. so sorry, Suzanne. That was I mean, me. I didn't realize I muted myself. No, it was me. I accidentally um, did that. So um, you have to unshare your PowerPoint, and now you have to share your internet um, if you're using Chrome or Edge or whatever, because oh. we're still seeing your PowerPoint. Sorry That's about right. that. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, no so worries. Let's change the share window here. Okay. And let's see, which one is it? I think that one. Yeah, the Zoom software is not that intuitive to be able to switch between different modules. <laughs> I have to admit, I had forgotten about that. So I'm hoping that you're all seeing the website now. Yes, um, we do. Okay, Thank you all so right. much. Yeah, you bet. So what I'll do, I'll make sure to unshare and then reshare to get back to my last slide because that has all my contact information on it. So Perfect. Um, here we are in the uh, on the web page, and I'm just going to type in literary fiction, and it'll bring up my results. So remember, um, you can see what kind of search I'm doing. I'm doing a catalog search. I'm doing a keyword search. And over here in our card catalog on the left-hand side are something that we call facets, and they help you narrow down your search a bit. So say I'm in the building and I want to see what is on the shelf at this time or available digitally to me. So under the 
broader term of literary fiction, these are the things that are available right now for me to use either in the building or digitally. So this first item you can see is an ebook, and I'll be able to check that out. The second item is a physical print book. If you want to see where that is on the shelf to locate it, you just click on view details. And that way you can get the collection. It's an, um, at Fairhaven and Fiction and then under the author's name. Okay, and I'm gonna go back here. I would like to show you one record that has a number of format availabilities and that's this item here. You can see that it's available as a print book. It's available in large print. It's available as an ebook. It's available as an audio book on CD. So that's the physical book versus this item is called a downloadable audio. And that's those are the words that you'll cue into to know the difference between the digital version versus the print version or, or the, the tactile version, the, the book on CD. And so the book on CD says audiobook CD, again, downloadable, will have that in its title. Okay, so at this point, I have done a lot of talking and I'm going to pop back into my share here. Oh, you get to see, and let's see if it'll go. So here is my um, contact information. You've been very patient as I've talked through a number of things. And at this point, I would just love to open up to any questions that you might have. I'm happy to demonstrate how to find something if you have um, anything that you'd like to ask about. But um, if you think of something later on, feel free to contact me or contact the library directly. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share now and see what kind of questions you have. Okay. Um... Anybody have any questions about how to navigate the system? Oh, Darlene coming to you, go ahead. I just wanted to ask, how do you arrange for a curbside pickup? Yeah, so on our website, there's um, a link on our homepage and you can click on that and get the specific instructions. I'm happy to show you that right now, if you'd like. That would be great, thank you. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Let me pop back into, Oh, hold on one second. And let me set myself up for success here. Um, do, 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 do. Let's close that. I need to pop back into our window. Okay, so now I'm ready to share. Okay, so on our website, if you scroll down, you'll see this tag right here for curbside pickup. You just click on that, and that will give you all of our details. So the way curbside works right now is um, you can either use the My Libro app, or you can give us a call during our open hours, and um, if you click on My Libro, it'll walk you through it. We also have a link on the a web form that you can use. So you make sure that you request the items and that they come in for you once they arrive in and, and you know that you get that notification that the items are available for pickup. That's when you schedule your appointment. Don't schedule it before your items come in, um, especially if the item is coming from a distant location because uh, we won't be able to schedule you until the items are here. Did you have any other questions, Darlene, about that? Nope, she must not have any more questions. Does anybody else have any more questions? I have a question. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Becky. <laughs> yeah, hi. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> my question is, 
um, through uh, Canopy, we have access to that whole uh, huge range. But do I understand also that on the library website, I could go into um, the uh, digital material held in the library and I can access, let's say a, a DVD that the library has and I can see it on my home screen. Is, is that true or? No, um, there might be some duplication from what we have in Canopy to what we have in the library. So for example, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the great courses. Yeah, um, I watch those all the time. <laughs> yeah. So that's an example where we have duplication and you have access to the great courses and you actually have ac more access through Canopy um, because as the physical items fail, they're very expensive and it's harder yeah. to replace them. Mm -hmm. um, but if we have it as a DVD, it's not necessarily available dig digitally and we, we don't have the rights uh, to to show uh, that digital content or that <laughs> that DVD mm -hmm. digitally. So um, there's a lot of, there can be some overlap, especially in documentaries, but um, it's two different services. It's, okay. So just because it's in the catalog doesn't mean it's available in the digital format. I see, okay. And eBooks, yeah. uh, audio books, audio books that the library has, that we can borrow and listen to on our home device without actually picking up something physically from the library, right? Exactly. I and, haven't. Or, oh, go um, ahead. Yeah, and and so it it doesn't work like as in Libby. You might listen to the first chapter, then you do something else, and two days later you come back. Will it put you right back where you left off? Yes, it, it oh. should retain where you left mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And um, those user guides that I mentioned, part of what they contain is how to navigate and use them. Um, so how to navigate through chapters, how to return somewhere, how to start over, how oh. to return, uh -huh. and all those pieces are in those user guides. Okay. Um, but yes, it should recall where you left off. Um, some... Depending on your software and mm -hmm. which app, um, you may or may not be able to download. Um, so the difference between downloading and streaming is streaming requires that you have a constant Wi-Fi connection. Ah, oh, yes. Uh -huh. And if you, so that's great if you're traveling um, to have that download option. Not all devices and software versions allow you to download. Mm -hmm. Content, whether that's an ebook or or a, an audio book, mm -hmm. um, the movies are always streaming, so you always have to have a Wi-Fi connection if you're doing mm -hmm. the movies. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yes, it will remember where you left off. That's great. All right, thanks so much. Very sure. interesting. We have I one more question with Chris. Thanks, Becky. We have one more question with Chris, and then we're going to take a tiny little break <laughs> class. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Hi, Suzanne. Can you, I think this is under the topic of interlibrary loan, maybe, but can you explain um, the services that we have available to us, uh, like using um, material at Wilson Library or any other places? How, how does that work? Okay, um, so remind me where Wilson, Li Wilson Library oh, is, well, Western? Western? Western, yeah. Yeah, um, so interlibrary loan, um, right now, so there's, I think there's two things in your question, actually. Probably. Um, we are highly collaborative with the academic libraries, which is Wilson, um, as an example, and public, other public libraries in, in Whatcom County, uh, the Whatcom County Library System, in that we have designated libraries where we used to be able to send materials. So if you designated that location as a pickup, we would send our materials there for pickup. So BTC, uh, Whatcom Community College, Western Libraries, and Wilson, those were all locations where you could yeah. pick up public library items. 
Right now we have a staff shortage and we don't have the capacity to make those deliveries. So right now we are still having people pick up. So that's not necessarily an interlibrary loan though. Right. That's just yeah. us collaborating. Um, interlibrary loan is when we ask on your behalf, um, other libraries across the nation, hey, we don't own this item, our patron would like it, will you loan it to us? And they can check it out through us. I th is that what you were talking about? That's, yeah, that's what I meant, yes. Okay, yeah, and that's definitely interlibrary loan. Sometimes people get those two things confused. So yes, we can borrow something through Wilson Library on your behalf, um, especially right now during COVID, the, the, the academic campuses are closed to people who are not staff or students. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I would also encourage you to explore your community card options because we are all part of Whatcom County Collaborates in that if you have a public library card, you might not know this, you can also get a community card um, at your academic libraries and have direct access. So you don't necessarily have to do that interlibrary loan route for Western BTC Whatcom community. Um, but right now it's just, these are odd times. And so it might be that the interlibrary loan so you can pick the items up with us um, is the way to go. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank you so much, Suzanne. So much information, so many <laughs> options at the library. We really appreciate it. Everybody, if you guys wanna say thank you, if you missed the presentation, we will be putting it on our Let's Talk About webpage and Tammy and Mary, Tara will let you know when that's on there. And again, thank you, thank you, Suzanne. Thank, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. I didn't know you guys had great courses. That's awesome to know. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are fabulous. Yep, absolutely. Have a good break, and thank you so much for listening to me. And uh, we'll see you in the library, hopefully.